The Jell-O program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston and Phil Harris and his orchestra. The orchestra opens the program with you on my mind from the picture, Here Comes Carter. of us has a favorite dessert, but once in a while, some particular dessert becomes everybody's favorite. And that's the way it is with Jell-O. Jell-O is first in favor because it's first in flavor. Six delicious flavors that come from fresh, ripe fruit. Jell-O brings you added true fruit goodness, and that's why it's the fastest selling gelatin dessert in the entire world today. But remember that Jell-O, and only Jell-O, brings you that swell, extra rich fruit taste. So whenever you want a dessert that looks good, tastes better, and costs very little, serve Jell-O. Only be sure you get the real thing. Look for the big red letters on the box. They spell Jell-O. That was the last number of the sixth program in the new Jell-O series. And we'll be with you again next Sunday night at the same time. I hope you all enjoyed our version of Girls' Dormitory. Come on, Mary, I'll take you home. I just got here. Oh, good night, folks. Hey, Jack, what's the idea? You're still on last week's show. Oh, I know, Don, but we were so rushed last Sunday that we didn't have time to finish the program, and I, I never like to leave things undone. You know. Well, Jack, when shall I start tonight's show? Uh, right now, go ahead. Okay, let's go. J-E-L-L-O. The Jell-O program starring You Know Who with Hoosus and his orchestra. The orchestra opens the program with whatchamacallit from the motion picture of the same name. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we bring you the man who got up on the wrong side of the program, Jack Benny. Uh, Jello again. This is Jack Benny, who just said good night and hopes nobody took him seriously. Uh, say, Don, wouldn't it be awful if people heard me say that and thought that the program was really over? Oh, Jack, I don't think people pay any attention to anything you say. Well, that makes me feel better. You know. <laughs> say, Jack. Uh, but no kidding, Don. Didn't we have fun last week with our schoolroom play? Oh, we sure did. Yes. Say, Jack. You know, Don, it brought back a lot of memories. And it makes you wonder what became of your old schoolmate. Yes, it does. Yes. Say, uh, Jack. You know, it's good to remember your old friends <laughs> once in a while and, and hark back to childhood days. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I got to get in here someplace. <laughs> yep, it's fun reminiscing. And you know, Don, I bet a lot of my old school pals in Waukegan, Illinois, are sitting around Stub Wilbur's garage listening to this program right now. We sure, we sure are, are, Jack. Jack. Thanks, <laughs> Bob. <laughs> you see, Don? And you know, Don, when I went to school, we used to have a lot of winter sports in Waukegan. Say, I'll never forget an old pal of mine, Joe Hickey. Uh, many of the time, Hickey and I played hooky just to play hockey. You're a little hokey there, Jack. True, though. It's true. Oh, I'll bet those were the happy days. They sure were. And oh, Don, that little schoolhouse. I can just see that little red schoolhouse nestled in the hills among those sturdy oak trees. What a dump. <laughs> No, I happen to have a picture of it here with me. Come here a minute, Don. Take a look at this. Oh, boy, what a quaint old building. Isn't it picturesque? Yes, and look at that old-fashioned pump out in front. That's me, and my nose isn't that long. <laughs> now, but, gee, when I think of the hardships I went through to get an education, well, I remember one cold winter morning when I was just a kid. 
I had to walk through 10 miles of snow to return a book I borrowed. That was Abraham Lincoln. Oh, it was? <laughs> well, anyway, I did something with that book I borrowed. You probably kept it. Well, I haven't finished it yet. <laughs> <laughs> Say, Jack, I remember once when I had to walk through 10 miles of snow right here in Hollywood. Why, Mary, it never snows here in Hollywood. It's a fine time to tell me. Go away, will you? Uh, tell me, Jack, when you were a schoolboy, uh, what were your favorite subjects? Well, Don, you may not appreciate this, but when I went to school, I expelled in smelling. I mean, I excelled in spelling. I was very good at it, really. Say, hey, Jack. Yes, Phil? As long as I'm standing around here like a big dope, oh. why don't you ask me about my school days? I was coming to that, Phil. Uh, you went to school in Alabama, didn't you? Yeah, and what hardships I went through. Oh. Well, I remember one bitter cold morning I had to walk through 10 miles of cotton to get to school. That's very funny. <laughs> I didn't like it. Neither did I. <laughs> oh, uh, Jack, uh, did Kenny Baker ever go to school? Kenny? Why, of course he did. <laughs> His teacher must have been Gracie Allen. <laughs> That's no way to talk about Kenny, especially when he isn't here yet. And that reminds me, I don't know whether you fellas know it or not, but tonight is Kenny's first anniversary on this program. It, it is. is. Yes, and I'm sure he doesn't know anything about it, so when he comes in, let's all give him a real welcome. I got a present for him, too. What'd you get him, Jack? I'm not going to tell you. It's a surprise. Oh, come on, tell us. No, no, I had to walk through 10 miles of bargain basements to get it. <laughs> uh, hey, Don. Hey, Mary, where's Don? Oh, well, he's over there in the corner, sulking. Sulking? What for? Don, come here a minute. I won't. <laughs> Well, what's the matter with you? Well, gee, you ask everybody else about their school days and you didn't ask me, that's what. Why, Don, I didn't ignore you purposely. Now, come on, tell us about your school days. Well, I had plenty of hardships, too, believe me. Ah. <laughs> well, I remember one bitter cold morning I had to eat through 10 miles of jello to get to school. Now, Don, that never happened. You just made it up, kid. I know, but it was clever, wasn't it? <laughs> I didn't like it. Well, the sponsor did. Play, Phil. <laughs> Ten miles. and his orchestra playing with The Ice Swing, a brand new number and should be a hit. I liked it. Didn't you like it, Phil? I wasn't listening. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I wish Kenny would get here. Will he be surprised? I bet he doesn't know it's his anniversary. I bet he doesn't know it's his birthday. Why, it isn't his birthday. I bet he doesn't even know that. <laughs> <laughs> he does, too. Jack, come on, tell us. Why'd you get Kenny for a present? Oh, you'll find out soon enough. It's something he can wear. Oh, Jack, Jack, here comes Kenny now. Now, remember, fellas, this is a surprise, and we don't want to tip him off. Gee, I can just see how his face and when it'll be red when he finds out all about him. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of a line was that? <laughs> 
Don, just read the script. You know what I wrote. <laughs> Quiet. Here comes Kenny. Hello, Kenny. How are you, Hi, Kenny. Kenny. Hi, fellas. Hello, Mary. Mary, why don't you answer him? I'm not going to give away the surprise. <laughs> Kenny, come here a minute. Now think. Think, Kenny. Do you know what day this is? Sure, it's my first anniversary. Well! well. Oh, then you knew it. Yes, Kenny, it's your first anniversary. First anniversary of what? <laughs> hmm. I knew he started out too good. Yeah. Look, Kenny, you've been on the Jell-O show exactly one year today. But to us, you're still the baby of our program. Baby? Yeah. <laughs> Mary, what are you laughing at? Now I know what you bought for him. <laughs> it's nothing of the kind. He's too old. I am not. <laughs> Well, anyway, Kenny, I want to congratulate you. You've been a great asset to our program, and I hope you'll be with us for a long time. Come on, fellas, let's all give Kenny a big cheer. Hooray! Wait for us, Kenny. <laughs> now, all together, boys. Hooray! Come on, come on, Kenny, say something. Well... <laughs> I, I don't know what to say, fellas. Oh, come on, don't be bashful. Hey, Phil, uh, give them that box to stand on. And turn it around so they can all see the big red letters on it. Yes. <laughs> all right, Kenny, uh, you read that line all right, uh, Don. You know? <laughs> <laughs> all right, Kenny, let's have it. Nice speech. Attention, everybody. Well, <clears throat> fellow people. Hmm. I am very happy to be here today, and I think that this, my first anniversary, is even better than my second one, and many more to come, which is certainly some stuff. What's he talking about? I don't know. It doesn't seem like I've been on this program a whole year, but I guess that's because we broke it up into half hours. Atta Atta boy, boy, Kenny. Kenny. <laughs> and furthermore, I wish to state that success hasn't gone to my head like it did to my good friend, Jack Benny. <laughs> thanks, Kenny, thanks. Oh, don't mention it. No. And to show my appreciation for the present I hope to receive, <laughs> I will sing a beautiful number entitled Talking Through My Heart from Jack's last picture, The Big Broadcast. My latest picture, not my last. <laughs> Knock wood. Ouch. Continue, Kenny. P.S. I dedicate this song to my girl, Lena, who is sitting right here in the first row. Say something, Lena. <laughs> Gee, her speech was better than Kenny's. <laughs> Mary. Well, go ahead and sing, Kenny, and when you get through, I've got a little surprise for you. Is it a present? Yeah, but you gotta sing first. Uh, say, Phil, do you know Kenny's number? Yeah, it's granted 3414. Oh. Bye, answer, hang up. Yeah. Isn't this a silly way to make a living? Sing, Kenny. I hope Norman got my wire. Confess my store of information Is not complete in many ways In school I never was rated a star I'm a dud at clever conversation I'm always hunting for a phrase To say how perfectly lovely you are Talk of this and that I'll admit I may be talking through my hat But when I say I love you I'm talking through my heart Though it often isn't right I agree with people just to be polite but when I say I love you, 
I'm talking through my heart. I might say more than I do, but the words refuse to come. Yet the fact that I'm in love with you, only you, shows I'm not so dumb. Something magic in your eye makes it hard for me to speak above us. But when I say I love you and want you to say you love me, oh, I'm talking through my heart to you. Talking Through My Heart from the big broadcast sung by Kenny Baker. And Kenny, you sang that as if you were really stuck on Lena. Do I get my present now? Yes, but it's a surprise. Now, first, I want you to close your eyes. Come on, Kenny, close your eyes. Both of them? Yes. Now, I'll give you a little hint as to what the present is. They come in pairs. They're made of metal. They have ball-bearing wheels. And you wear them on your shoes. Now, what are they? Spats. No, Kenny, look, Kenny, you go around on them and they have straps. Oh, a streetcar. Isn't that awful? Say, Jack. What? Why don't you try it with his eyes open? <laughs> now, wait, he can't be that bad. Look, I'll try it once more. Now, Kenny, listen carefully. Every child has them. Measles? No. <laughs> roller skates, roller skates! <laughs> drama, Buck Benny Rides Again. The scene is the borrow, borrow, but don't pay back old rancho. <laughs> Curtain. Music. <laughs> mm. <laughs> nice acting, Don. <laughs> it was Don Wilson, folks, just an old cow ham. 
come in. Hello, Daisy. Hello, tall, dark, and bow-legged. <laughs> hmm, looks like you spent a little time on a horse yourself. <laughs> Is your pappy in? No, he's out of Bran and the cattle. Where you been, Buck? I've been Buck home for a couple of weeks. <laughs> and I just got Buck. <laughs> Welcome, Buck, back. <laughs> Well, I reckon we're going far enough on that dollar. <clears throat> Here comes Pappy now. I said Pappy, not Puppy. Well, here I come anyway. Hello, Sam. Daisy tells me you've been out branding the cattle. Yep, but I had to stop. How come? Ran out of brandy. <laughs> you know, Sam, there's been a lot of rustling going around here lately, and that's what I'm here to see about, as long as the brandy's all gone. Yes, I know. I'm expecting the sheriff here any minute. Must be him now. Come in. Pardon me. I'm Officer Murphy, and I cover this beat. Are you Jack Benny? Yes, but I can't talk to you now, Officer. We're right in the middle of our sketch. Sketch or no sketch, you listen to me. Does a lad by the name of Kenny Baker work here? Yes, why? Well, he was skating down Hollywood Boulevard <laughs> and knocked over Tony's push cart with all his fruit on it, causing a lot of damage. He did? Yeah. Come in here, you two. Why, Kenny? I didn't mean to do it. Problem here, problem here. My business is my business. So, that's what I meant to do with the my push cart. I couldn't help it. My banana, she's a flyer this way. My coconut, she's a flyer that way. My wife, she's a flyer this way. Now, don't get excited. Who's to get excited? I'm going to have a district guy put in the jail. Take your skates with you, Kenny. Shut up for you. See, I'm scared. Sit down, Kenny. I'll handle this. All of my fruit is a squash. My banana is a squash. Everything is a squash. What am I going to sell? Squash. <laughs> Shut up for you. Well, what do you want? I want money for damages. I must see my lawyer. You don't need a lawyer. We can settle this. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Don't settle anything. <laughs> now what? Hello. Is this Jack <laughs> Oh, you again. Are you this man's lawyer? You said it, Poopsie. <laughs> Are your hands clean? Yes. Then here's my car. <laughs> Same guy. Pat C. Flick. What's the C for? Catonius. <laughs> now, listen here, Flick. I didn't bump into your client's push card. You can't do anything to me. Oh, no? Who bought that roller skate? I did. So what? So this. I'll have you in court as soon as my witnesses arrive from New York. New York? The accident happened in California. Wait till you hear my witnesses. <laughs> you and your fake witnesses. You can't intimidate me. I can, huh? Well, listen to this. Hello again. This is Dick Barney talking. I said intimidate, not imitate. <laughs> Never mind that. How was I? Lousy. Shut up, are you? <laughs> Quiet, Bambino. <laughs> Now, look here, you can't blame me for this accident. I wasn't anywhere near the place. This the guy, he's a crazy. Pipe down, solo mio. <laughs> I'll handle this. Listen to me, Buck Benny. Everything you said is irrelevant. And irrelevant never forget. <laughs> Are you going to settle or yes? <laughs> Well, if that's the case, what's the total damage? Well, the push cart will have to be repainted. That will cost you $1,000. Repainted? $1,000 for painting a push cart? Who's going to do it, Michelangelo? <laughs> Mary, is there anything else? Don't forget my wife. She's got the damage, too. What's the matter with her? Well, the push cart, she'd fall on top of her and knock out the four teeth. And now she cannot talk. All right, how much for that? Well, for that, I allow you $5. <laughs> Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. We're wasting a lot of time. How much cash will it take to settle this thing right now? Five hundred dollars. No, no, six hundred. Go on, take five. No, no, six hundred. All right, six hundred. I'll give you twenty-five dollars. Okay. <laughs> well, thank heaven that's over. Here's your twenty-five. Get thank out of you. here. Well, Tony, fifty-fifty. Here's your five. Come on. <laughs> Of 
think that a kid like that had to cause me all this trouble. Now, listen here, Kenny. I hate to do this, but I've got to give you a good talking to. Don, carry on while I speak to Kenny and talk a little louder than usual. Will? Okay, Jack. Now, come here, Kenny. Jell-O is the largest selling me, gelatin dessert in the world. It's economical and easy to make, and every well, day millions of people eat it. Kind of so be sure and insist on genuine Jell-O, which comes in six delicious flavors. Strawberry, raspberry, cherry, orange, lemon, and lime. And not only that, you spoil our sketch and practically ruin the entire show. Now, aren't you a little bit ashamed of yourself, Kenny? No. Well, play, Phil. <laughs> Everybody likes chocolate, everybody likes pudding. And the perfect combination of both is found in Jell-O chocolate pudding. It's a new product with the grandest homemade flavor you've ever tasted. Smoother, creamier, more chocolatey. That's what everybody will say of Jell-O chocolate pudding. And it's amazingly easy and inexpensive to make. Here's all you do. Simply mix the contents of one package of Jell-O chocolate pudding with some milk in the top of your double boiler, letting it cook until the mixture is thick and satin smooth. It takes only about 10 minutes altogether. Then, after it's cooled, serve Jell-O chocolate pudding in sherbet glasses. You'll have a rich, delicious dessert that will win cheers from everyone who's lucky enough to be on hand. And remember, Jell-O chocolate pudding sells for the same low price as Jell-O, and one package will make enough for six luscious servings. Ask your grocer tomorrow for Jell-O chocolate pudding, and if he hasn't put it in stock yet, be sure he orders it for you. Seventh program in the new Jello series, and we'll be with you again next Sunday night at the same time. Say, Mary, did you hear me when I bawled out Kenny? Yes, and I think he deserved it, too. I think so. Well, so long, Jack. So long. Why, Mary, where'd you get Kenny's skates? Search it up, Mister! Good night, folks. <laughs> from the picture of the same man. This program will come to you from the NBC studios in Hollywood. This is the Red Network of the National Broadcasting Company. KFI Los Angeles, Earl C. Anthony, Incorporated.